Picture this. It's mid-December and you're walking through a forest. Frost coats the ground and icicles hang from branches. What at first looks like could just be a big chunk of ice attached to one of the trees. You see upon further inspection, it's actually a frog that's frozen. But this frog isn't dead. This is an eastern wood frog, which can survive temperatures as low as minus eight degrees Celsius for weeks at a time. But how is this possible? How can a tiny frog that's frozen in winter emerge seemingly unharmed a few weeks later? For an explanation, we need to first look at a molecule we see in our everyday lives, and this is water. Water molecules have a wide V shape, so kind of like this, bigger than a 90 degree angle. When six of these water molecules come together, they form a hexagon shape. And these hexagons can then fit together to form an even bigger structure called a polycrystal. Now polycrystals forming on our, on our trees in our forest don't matter so much. But if they form inside of a frog's body, or any life for that matter, they can become really harmful. And this is because when water turns into ice, it expands, which could cause any of our cells to rupture. Now frogs have somehow managed to work out a process to avoid this happening. So scientists at the Isis Neutron and Muon Source, where I work, set out to discover its secrets. The frogs contain a compound called glycerol, which is a sugar you could find in something like ice cream. Now, the scientists found that glycerol surrounds our water molecules and captures them like a trap. And this means those dangerous polycrystals can't form. The process of not uh, these frogs not freezing on the inside is called cryopreservation. Now, if we break this word down, cryo means cold and preservation means stay the same. So the frogs stay the same, even in the cold. But you might be thinking, well, this is really cool, but what's that got to do with my life? Well, cryopreservation techniques have already been applied to our everyday life, such as in food preservation, frozen fruit is being kept fresher for longer, and in treatments like IVF, which can help couples have babies. The embryos uh, can be frozen using cryopreservation techniques, and this means if they're ever needed again in the future, they are there and available. And scientists are now starting to think about how cryopreservation could be used in hospitals, maybe for things like organ transplants, where the organs must be kept as cold as possible once they've left a body and need to enter to the next. So I think the message we can learn here is that we can learn so much from the wildlife around us. Us as humans, we might have cities and we might have plains, but actually wildlife has developed techniques hundreds or thousands of years ago that we are only starting to discover and now using for ourselves. So all of our lives can be made a little bit better with a little help from our frogs.